Um, I'm actually doing this as part of the uh, engine swap. I don't know if you can see that, but the engine's gone uh, at the moment. Um, but I got stuck on some other things, so um, this is going to be a standalone video. I didn't find a video about this on YouTube, and I didn't see any instructions whatsoever in the big green book, which means I'm on my own, which is really bad, because allow me to show you how complicated this is. I recorded this at the time, but it came out really long, so I just want to show you really quickly. Um, the cable for the release goes under the carpet, but on this side of the, the metal um, body. And you have to take this off. It just pops off, as you can see. And important to note is the carpet is held on, it has these loops, and it's held on by this electrical wire. So if you try and pull that out, you'll, you'll break the loops, which you can see I did back here, actually, uh, before I knew about that a long time ago. So you actually have to pop the cable out, or the wiring harness out, and then you can get the carpet out from underneath, and you have to do that because you'll never really get access there trying to pull this away. And in fact, the seat really needs to come out as well. And I'll show you later. I may show you some pictures of this while I'm talking because, like I said, it just came out really long. But the cable runs there, and then it runs along the back wall, across to the other side, through the brunk, and then out the back fender and around out here. So I've never done this before, so I'm not sure if all of these steps are necessary, but the next step I'm going to do, because I think I want to access this carpet down here, I can actually see, I think one of these is the cable, uh, right there, I got my light on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece, and it looks to me like it just also pulls out except for this little clip right here. So I'll just break that right now. So st step two is break clip. What row? This is uh, looking like it's, you gotta be careful not to scratch that up. It's looking dangerously like it might come out without breaking. Stop it, stop it. Huh. Wow, miracle. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm missing one. All right, uh, I already took this off, but just to let you know, one of the bolts is underneath this little cover, so it just pops right off, no problem. And then that one and that one, I believe are 14 millimeters. Yep, 14 millimeters. Oh, and don't forget to check under the seat and make sure there aren't any electrical wires there for like airbag or something. There's definitely one on the passenger seat. I'm not sure about the driver's seat, but nothing more annoying than to go to lift it out and then find you're held in place by some, you know, wire still connected to the seat. So do that first. Then if you push the seat all the way backward, you can get access to the two front screws. And I cannot stress this enough. When you're pulling the seat out, be really careful. These legs stick out from the seat when you're lifting up and they're very it's very easy for that metal to hit that plastic and scratch scratch it pretty easily and very severely. Here's another top tip. I put this clamp on the seat belt and that keeps it from retracting and then I could just put this back there without having to try and pull it through or anything like that. Uh, but I think I'm going to wind up disconnecting at the bottom anyway just to help move the carpet out of the way and get, and get to this cable down here. Alright, so to remove these, they have to be pinched this way to come out. How exactly you do that? I don't know, I break them. Alright, when you get this far, you may have a problem with this holding the carpet down and not giving you access to these, even though they're pretty close right there. Uh, so there's a screw right here I noticed, or whatever bolt. It's like a 10 millimeter, so I got my 10 millimeter out. It's all nice and shiny in there because it's inside. So let's see what happens when I pull that out. I'm gonna put the camera down. Okay, this piece is one of those ones that's easy to break, so here's how you do it. You pry it out at the front. I'll show you here. There's the grief. There's the I don't know, fingers that grab, right? So you pull it. Um, I can't do it with one hand. This thing goes that away. You're prying it out from in front, and then once you get it there, it'll be like this. You go forward. It almost seems like you should go backward, but you go forward and out. So you can see how, oh, actually, there's the, there's the hook. I guess it just kind of goes straight. So why would forward do the trick? Backward? Mm. 
I don't know, once I got it, I sort of was able to lift and then I just pushed in both directions until it finally popped out. So after you remove these two 10 millimeter bolts into the side of the car, they're the shiny gold ones because they're inside, I guess, uh, that'll free this whole mechanism. Part of it still goes through, a lot of it still goes through actually, so I don't think you need to do anything more than to roll it and disconnect the appropriate one. How do you know what the appropriate one is? Uh, you want the trunk release, it's the one on the right, which would be the one on the bottom in this case. Of course, the harder one to get to down here. I think disconnecting that is kind of uh, self-explanatory here. Uh, this piece was in there and you just pop it out. And then the same thing here, if you rotate this, the cable, to the slot, hard to coordinate my headlamp, the camera, and my fingers, but anyway, you can see a slot there. If you rotate this around to the slot, it'll it'll just slide out the side, upward in this case. All right. So the cable, the first clip, there aren't any more clips um, anywhere along this side. And I don't even see any up to this point, but the carpet's being held by this little clip, so I'm gonna pull that out. But then it runs that way, and I'm pretty sure the guy said it goes all the way through the passenger side, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the center console so that I can move the carpet away and access it. He also removed this, and I, I guess that it's probably going to be necessary, but I'll get there when I get there. All right, so I'm going to remove the center console, as I mentioned, and the, in their brilliance, they managed to put these two screws behind the seats, so you can't unscrew them, of course. Um, no matter how far back you push the seat, it always still comes to about here, and you're done. These two, you can move the seat all the way forward. You can see where this is, and I've moved this seat all the way, and I could access it. So what I did was the last time I removed the center console, I actually just left that screw out. So this is actually ready to go without removing the passenger seat. Now the next step was to remove the right side bronc, just like I said, and you have to remove the one on the wall over there to get to it. And at least, you don't have to remove those two at the top, but you do have to re at least pop the rest of these to get that side panel out. And before you do that, you gotta take the one out that's on the right door sill because it's on the top of that one. So, so if you partially remove that one, then you can get this one out. It's kind of deep, so you have to pull a bit, but it eventually comes out. And now hopefully I can pull all the carpet back and see where this thing goes. There's the cable right there. And, oh, okay, well, there we go. I also lost a clip up underneath there as well as this one that just now popped out. So you gotta watch all these stupid little plastic clips. Okay, if you see in the back there, the um, where the light is shining, the cable runs behind that panel. So kinda have to take that out after all. All right, and finally we found where the little culprit goes to. Here's where he comes up. He goes underneath, of course, because it's harder that way. The seatbelt uh, explosive device thingy, pretensioner and goes into the side of the car. Hopefully, sorry for all the banging around the camera. Uh, right there, let's get the light on, there we go. Right here, it uh, goes through the wall, and that is where, right here, the cable goes and it takes a dive down, and that's where it takes the dive to. So down in there somewhere. Now, I'm not trying to extract it. Uh, it looks like it's fairly easy-ish. This wraps all the way around. I'm guessing these are all gonna break. Uh, the ones in the car were only, they were open clips. So, like this one here, you see, so you can just sort of pull it out, which is nice. Uh, those are back there. They're not like that. This one, I think, does that too, yep. So, for the most part, you can pop it out. Now, the question is, do you pop, do you feed it in from outside or feed it from the inside to the outside of the car? So I'm thinking I go inside and push it out. Which means, to take it out, I gotta go from the outside and push it in. So I'm gonna go break all these little clips and then uh, do that. So I'm gonna remove the latch to get to the cable down there. Okay, so the little ball on the end of the cable, uh, you can see there's a slot on the bottom. So that's the direction it goes out. But you can see the plastic piece right there, and there's the other part that slid in from the side has just basically severed. Looks like a good opportunity in my opinion to have used a metal piece, but <clears throat> planned obsolescence. This clip looks to me like it does this. Grabs and then inserts which would mean you'd have to get it from behind to release it to pull it out, but 
there's no access behind, which means I'm likely to break this right now, but I'm gonna give it a try and see if I can't open it instead. Wish me luck. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's exactly like I described. It grabs around and then pushes into the hole and that holds that in a loop. And then, so you have to get it from behind, but you can't. So I've forced it, but I might be able to lose it. All right, I hope the camera focuses on this. I'll try and keep my hand behind it. <clears throat> it's a crappy clip, which I hate, but you have to admire the ingenuity of the thing. It sort of does this, it closes, and then it sort of snaps into place. So now I can't even slide them past each other. I have to pull them apart and then slide them apart like that. Unfortunately, once they do this and they go in, it has this typical arrowhead design, which if you don't squeeze them in and you pull it out, you just rip these backwards and ruin the clip and you have to get new ones, which is pretty typical. But if you want to give it a try, uh, apparently going in line with this uh, is your best chance of, of compressing those to get it out. All right, because car manufacturers love to make things easy on us, there are two clips here that are pretty easy to get. There's the one, you just lift the cable straight up and behind it you can see the other one. Down in there, there's a third one and it's right there. You can see the plastic sticking out. Solving problems so you don't have to. Look at what they did to us. Yeah, how are you supposed to get that off down in there? Well, apparently the only way is the way I did it, which was I went ahead and attacked it from the outside, from there, and then I pushed enough of the cable through that I could pull it this far out to see what was going on, and I can see what's going on, and that sucks. Well, uh, due to this grommet, thingy, whatever, being on this end and coming in the kit, I now have altered my opinion that it should go in from outside to inside. And as you can see, I've gotten most of it out, but of course, it's stuck on something. Oh, oh finally. Don't, can't tell you how long I've been pulling on that thing trying to get it out, but finally, it's out. Okay, I'm stupid, don't do what I did. Uh, and the stupid thing really is that I thought of this beforehand and then forgot along the way because I was so busy trying to overcome little things that don't pull that out. <laughs> don't pull the cable out until you attach your cable to the end and use it like a snake to pull it through because I can't get access, pushing this way, I can't get access to that hole. Pushing it the other way, this thing doesn't go through the hole. So it doesn't act as its own fish tape. It's, this is too big, so it really needs to be fed back from the outside to the inside. Uh, the long piece needs to go, but if you stick this down there, you're never gonna find that hole. So what I think I'm gonna do, because I've removed this, seriously, that was stupid. Please don't do that if you're doing this job. Okay, allow me to explain how colossally stupid that was of me to pull that cable out without attaching the other one to the other end, because this is, I've just quadrupled the workload. Down in there, you can see there's like a little plate just beyond the antenna. See the antenna? And that separates that compartment from this one, and there are lots of little holes around the edges. As you can see, one of them allows the antenna to go, I mean the cable to go around. But, when you're pushing from the inside, the cable is not stiff enough to go at the angle you want. And so what happens is the, um, the cable winds up all in this compartment and won't go to that compartment so you can't reach through. The ar my arm can only reach to about here uh, before it gets bound up on the, on the body panel. And so, I can't quite, I can't get to this other compartment from there. Okay, I got kind of lucky. It didn't take quite as long as I thought. An actual fish tape is very stiff and because it's flat, it allows you to grab, to, to angle it. 
without bending it. So I was able to go at an upward angle and you can see it right there sticking out. I got it through. So <clears throat> now I can pull um, my cable through from this direction on the end of that ta fish tape. So if you are um, you know, as low IQ as I am, then uh, this is how you can do it. Uh, if you don't have a fish tape, you'll have to go get one, I guess. But I don't see any, honestly, any other method, just short of removing the fender, just I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, so I just use this blue tape. It's not super strong, and if I have to pull really hard, there's a chance it'll rip, which would really suck. But uh, it's on there, and so now all I have to do is pull it through. And yes, this time I thought ahead a little bit, and I made sure I grabbed the right end. <laughs> That's the one that goes inside. I'm gonna pull it through to the inside. And over there's the other end. So here we go. So it's, it's raining for real, for rizzle. And I have to say it's, it's really kind of nice. It's cooler and the sound is pleasant. It's not really lightning or thundering or anything. And Right now it's not coming in the garage, so I'm still all right. And something about the rain sometimes that's really nice, especially on a hot summer day, and <laughs> it just comes down like this. When you're putting on the hood, it's a good idea to stick something in there in these corners to protect the paint, as I've done over there. I, in my infinite wisdom, thought I would only need it on the one side because I'd be controlling this side, but somehow yet I managed to crunch the paint. So do yourself a favor, put something like this in between both sides while you're doing this until it's secure. So I adjusted the uh, latch all the way up. I thought I would start there and then move down if necessary. So I'll just uh, pop the hood. It looks good. So. Great. Here's a little hint if it uh, if the hood or engine cover, whatever you want to call that thing, doesn't open, uh, doesn't pop open, you can stick something under the lever there and then just pull it open and that releases, releases the latch. I'm guessing the reason is these need to be adjusted upward. And if you just screw them up like that, they'll apply a little bit of pressure. And then, either that or I gotta lower the latch, but I kinda like the way the hood lined up. Oh, <laughs> forgot to take the tape out. All right, let's try it now. Well, that closes quite strongly, doesn't it? And there you have it, job done.